Hey guys, what's up, it's Eiffelin here, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be sharing with you guys my Warframe settings. Now, I'm not exactly sure why I get asked this question so much, but every so often I see a comment and they're like, hey Flynn, please share your settings. Now, I don't know if it's because of how I move in the game or if it's because of how my game looks, but I'm going to be showing you guys both my movement settings, so my key bindings and also my graphic settings. Now, I did build my PC by myself, so I've got a Ryzen 7 70 700X with an RTX 4070 Ti and that's paired with 32 gigabytes of Corsair RAM. So let's go ahead and move on to my key bindings. Now be warned my key bindings are kind of weird whenever you compare it to other players key bindings. I don't know why but I do it for every single game where my key bindings end up just being totally different from what most people use. So a lot of it does stay the same but where things get interesting is whenever you come to the movement. So the sprint, the dodge, the regular sprint key and the roll. So I actually sprint or roll just by holding down mouse button four. So that's one of the side buttons on my mouse. I can go ahead and sprint just by itself by pressing mouse button five and I can do a roll by pressing control. And then the next notable thing is probably my gear setup. So if you come all the way to the bottom here, you can see gear hotkey one, two, three, four, and five. And basically you have numbers one, two, three, four, and five dedicated for your warframe abilities and to go into operator. But then then I've got six, seven, eight, nine, and zero, all four stuff in my gear wheel. So if I open up my gear wheel, I can see, you know, which slot has which button assigned to it. So normally I would have energy pads in the top slot. So I just press six to use an energy pad. Ammo pad is on seven. My arc wing is on eight. My arc gun is on nine. And I've got my codex scanner on zero. I've got another codex scanner there on the button next to zero. Then I have all of my uh, basically mining, fishing equipment, etc. And sometimes I'll move this around depending on what I'm doing, but not that often. The main one is actually just the arc wing launcher. So I just take my hand off my mouse as I'm running around because like Warframe is a game that doesn't need a lot of movement uh, off the mouse because you don't really need to aim that much. So right now I'm just got my left hand on my keyboard just running around so I'll take my left hand off of my mouse I'll go ahead and I'll press 8 and then I can put my hand back on my mouse and do the little blink and uh, get around quickly that way sounds a little bit complicated but it's just how I like to do it because then I can just you know do something like this and just keep on going into my arc wing launcher and fly myself around and all that cool stuff that's kind of it for the key bindings next up is my sensitivity and stuff so I use 1600 dpi on my mouse so my look sensitivity goes all the way to zero now you got to make sure that you do this for literally everything so arc wing has a different sensitivity compared to the normal gameplay so you got to turn it down there as well in for railjack and even whenever you're in captura and placing decorations and that's pretty much it for the keyboard and mouse settings you've got controller settings I haven't played with a controller in Warframe since I was a teenager so I don't look at this at all. System settings you can turn gore on or off here if you really want to. You got a bunch of networking stuff which eh, doesn't really matter to me. Sometimes I consider turning crossplay off if I find that I'm going into lobbies that have really shoddy connections which is happening more and more frequently but you know it is what it is. We've got uh, some social stuff here so this is just like allow invites you know show friend request notifications receive gifts etc but I have creator mode basically always turned on because what this is going to do is it's going to hide any spoilers and it reduces the frequency of some like annoying things that just sort of get in the way of recordings. Sometimes you're going to get a pop-up in game which is going to ask you like a random question so if you have enable surveys ticked that means that you're going to get these random pop-ups and they're just going to ask like have you been enjoying Warframe or how did you hear about it. If you find it hard to see the chat you can go ahead and up the scale in here as well and the text size too and if you really wanted to you can come in here and change the colors of the emojis. I think we're going to go with this one. This one looks pretty cool. For interface, I've got pretty much everything just uh, set the default. I've got my damage numbers set to enhance. Oh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn this one on. Show teammate glyphs instead of icons. I hate it being like just like the picture of the Warframe. I would rather see the glyph that players have equipped. If you really wanted to, you could come in here and mark your pet as well so you never lose it. There's a lot of different quality of life settings under the interface tab, to be honest. What you can do as well is you can go ahead and customize your UI theme. So for anyone that's interested, I'm using Deadlock 
uh, Dark Lotus and Zephyr Harrier. I think if I was to swap off of the Deadlock theme, I would go for either the Corpus theme, the Equinox theme, maybe the Stalker theme. And that's pretty much it. Fortuna's kind of cool, but I feel like that just makes all my Warframe colors darker than they really need to be. I think I'm going to swap off to the Lunar Renewal background. I was considering buying the Deadlock one, but he's literally not centered here. And that's kind of annoying me. He's not centered in this one either, but I feel like the cool, like, sort of effect is cool enough to sort of, you know, whatever, I guess. Oh my god, he's not centered in any of them. Yeah, now that I look at the Dark Lotus one, it's kind of mid compared to all the other ones. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and buy the Deadlock one, why not? Hopefully it centers up whenever I get to the login screen. And I'm going to stick with the Zephyr Harrier signs. And I'm going to keep my cursor the same color because screw changing that. I'll never be able to see it. Okay, so now we're moving on to the juicy stuff. We've got the display settings. So I always play on borderless full screen. I've got my resolution set to 1080p with a refresh rate of 390. So I'm playing on on an Acer 390 hertz monitor. So this is actually only meant to be 360 hertz, but it can go up to 390, implying you've got the right settings enabled. The reason that I've got 390 hertz is because I play a lot of Valorant whenever I'm not playing Warframe. Aspect ratio is set to auto. Vertical sync turned off. I really dislike vertical sync. Max frame rate is set to no limit. Brightness at 50, contrast at 50, and field of view set to 90. This is especially important if you want to stream Warframe because a common complaint amongst viewers is basically that uh, they can't tell what's going on. So if you have like a wider field of view, people can sort of see more of the surroundings and stuff like that. And in my opinion, it just makes the game a lot more enjoyable to play. I don't like the whole zoomed in tunnel vision effect that's going on. It's also useful if you're making guide videos because people can see more of the atmosphere around as well. So they can sort of familiarize themselves with the environments and stuff. They should honestly set the field of view to 90 at default. Two FPS is turned off because I literally don't care about my FPS in this game to be honest as long as it's above 60 I'm okay. Under upscaling I've got method turned off so no upscaling at all. Under graphics we've got the quality presets at the custom, geometry quality set to high, shadow quality set to high, extra memory set to high and then I've got particle system quality and GPU particle quality set to low and disabled. Now the reason that I have basically turned particles off is because it's important for content creation that these aren't turned on. So there's two main reasons. Whenever you're making thumbnails and stuff like that, you want things to sort of be as smooth and sharp as possible. So you don't want anything sort of like floating around and getting in your way whenever you're taking a picture for a thumbnail. That can also add a little bit of extra annoyances whenever you're trying to crop something out in the likes of Photoshop, for example. And then on the streaming side of things and also the video side of things, basically uh, this gets a little bit technical, but there is a thing called a bitrate. And bitrate is basically how how much information is provided to your video or your stream to basically like get better quality if that makes sense. So on a website like Twitch, you are limited to the amount of bitrate that you can stream to your streams video if that makes sense. And basically the more things that are happening on screen, the higher bitrate number you need to compensate for all the stuff that's happening. So if I was running around and I was slamming the ground a lot and making a ton of particle effects, I would need a high bitrate value to basically make that look as sharp as possible. But because on a live streaming website such as Twitch, you're limited to the amount of bitrate you can apply to your stream, then you want to keep this low so the rest of the game looks as sharp as it possibly can. Particle effects are very pretty in Warframe but they can get quite overwhelming and if you go ahead and you test this and you have the particles turned on and you just run around and slam stuff and you live stream to Twitch basically everything looks extremely blurry and mushed together but you don't want that. It also does uh, aid in YouTube video quality as well. On YouTube you can get a higher bitrate applied to your videos if you upload the video in a higher resolution such as 4k which is why if you look at one of my videos that only has the 1080p option opposed to the 4k option the 1080p it looks way worse than the 4k and that's because the 1080p has a lower bitrate assigned to it because there's nothing wrong with a 1080p resolution like I'm playing the game on a 1080p monitor right now and it looks totally fine but it's to do with the platforms that you're uploading your videos and streams to so I record in 1080p and then I render my videos out in 4k and then upload to YouTube in 4k just within the 1080p version of the video on YouTube looks a lot better because it has a higher bit rate assigned. Kind of a cool trick. It gets a lot more technical than that, but long story short, having the particles turned off or turned down basically improves the quality on platforms such as YouTube and
and Twitch because there's less going on on the screen. Therefore, more of the technical stuff can get applied to the rest of the image and the image looks smoother and sharper. I've got anti-aliasing turned up to high because again, I like my sharp gameplay. TAA sharpen turned up to 100 for some reason. Sharpen temporal VFX turned on. Anisotropic filtering on eight times. Trilinear filtering set to on. Dynamic lighting on. Volumetric lighting on, local reflection set to on, SSAO quality set to high, volumetric fog set to high, high shader quality turned on, motion blur turned off, number one, because I don't like it, and number two, because it makes the videos and streams look mushy as well. Depth of field turned on, this is how you get the cool sort of like blurred effect whenever an object isn't in focus, kind of like whenever you're taking a picture with a camera. Uh, distortions, I like to keep this turned off because I don't really care about it. Flares turned on because sometimes it can look cool. Film grain set to off because we hate this. Bloom set the off as well because I just don't like how flashy that makes the game look. Weapon elemental effect turned off because again you don't want those nasty little particles getting in the way of like a cool looking thumbnail or something and you having to go and edit it out to later whenever it comes to you know editing the photo in Photoshop. Color correction turned on, contact shadows on, character shadows on, sun shadows on, enhanced decals on, dynamic resolution turned off because I don't care too much about my performance and optimized flip model turned on as well. Under my volume settings so I have sound effects turned to 100 and the master volume set to 5. I don't want to hear the game's music. I don't want to hear any of the characters talking. As beautiful as your Octavia songs may sound, I don't want to hear them because I want to listen to my Post Malone or something on Spotify. I have my self Schwazen volume turned on because uh, sometimes I like to go ding, 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 ding on the guitar at the end while I'm waiting on someone to collect their void traces or reactant or whatever. I've got mute when running in background turned off. So then if I need to pull something up while I'm recording, then the game volume stays on and uh, the game volume keeps on getting recorded. Same for if I'm streaming. Enable Ortis Orbiter Transmissions. Now, I didn't know this was an option. That is getting turned off. Hint Transmissions off. Enable player hit marker sign sure and enable radio chatter in orbiter off reverb quality advanced reverb didn't know that's a thing enable operator voice i think he's kind of cringe he can be turned off uh this last thing down here this is voice so this is just if you want to use your microphone in game i recommend just having this turned off not many people use their mic in warframe public lobbies so then accessibility you can change like hold to sprint holding to aim you can change repeated button presses to tap or hold so this is like in a quest or something or in cal missions i recommend just keeping it on hold just for ease of access or ease of use for controller you can change hold to sprint hold to aim all that stuff we also have a bunch of like colorblind options here under video and you can actually highlight the enemy so if you go ahead and turn this on you can see the effect that this is what enemies are going to look like so if you struggle seeing enemies you can go ahead turn this on and make them glow you know either faintly or very strongly you can do a self highlight and an ally highlight so like this so if you struggle seeing your teammates you can just go ahead and keep this turned on and then you can come in and you can change the individual heads up display colors so for example if you want your buffs to stand out more you can go down here and you can change the color of the buffs to be like yellow or something but i'm not going to go ahead and mess with any of that because i'm so used to what i've got now, honestly that's pretty much it thank you for watching the video if you enjoyed it don't forget to leave a like and subscribe as it helps the channel a lot if you want to get early access to my videos you can become a channel member by pressing the join button beneath this video for five dollars a month or if you want early access to other cool resources and behind the scenes content you can subscribe to my patreon for less than five dollars a month consider clicking on the video on screen and i'll see you guys in the next one